This is the examination of the hidden human condition. You're listening to the Hidden Killers Podcast. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruski. We are talking with attorney Eric Faddis today. We're still going and digging into the case against Brian Koberger from the perspective of an attorney. There's been a lot of objections raised about the demolishing of the house on King Road where the students were living and where they were killed uh, last year. Members of the victims' families, three of them signaling that it should be preserved until after the trial uh, of the man that's been charged with the deaths. The school very much PR-wise wanting to uh, get rid of it. I shouldn't say PR. Uh, They are looking at it from the aspect of, you know, let's try and help the community heal which is very understandable. But at the same point, we are talking about a person's life. We are talking about uh, trying to truly get justice for this. Does it make any sense to tear this thing down prematurely of the, the trial taking place? You know, I can't for the life of me uh, understand why they would want to do it and demolish the house so urgently. Um, you know, I think it just potentially uh, opens up avenues that the defense can pursue to try and defend against the case. Uh, You know, if they demolish this house, um, you know, let's say there's some information that comes out later on. This is an ongoing investigation. Information is being learned by both sides all the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, If there's some information later on that defense gets and they say, hey, we want to go back into that house. We need to look into this room, you know, under this bed. We need to look for this piece of evidence or something like that. The granted, the scene, scene has been processed. But if defense no longer has the opportunity to go back to the scene, they're going to argue to the court that there's spoliation of evidence, that they're not able to do the investigation to try and exonerate their client that they wanted to do. And so why give defense the opportunity if you're the prosecution? Why do it? Like you said, is there an optics issue? Is there a PR issue? Is there a closure for the victims issue? Mm -hmm. Those considerations are valid, certainly. But I'm just not sure it makes sense to try to give the defense a potential gift by destroying what could be evidence uh, used later on. Sure, sure. Uh, Back in 2014, there was an arrest of Koberger, and it's very interesting. It was familial. Uh, he was arrested for stealing his sister's phone. His dad is the one who actually told the police about all of this. It was a time when he was apparently struggling with addiction, uh, his heroin addiction at the moment. Uh, When we look back at something like this, it it really kind of takes a a special type of individual or a very desperate addict to start stealing from your own family. Uh, Is something like that little pieces of his past uh, that show criminal behavior or very bizarre uh, intersocial behavior. Can pieces like this end up in the trial? And does it tell us anything about uh, his character, even though it was back in 2014? Yeah, you know, the prosecution is going to unearth anything they can about this defendant that may help them secure a conviction and possibly the death penalty. So here they're looking into his background. They're looking into prior bad acts that that Mr. Koberger uh, allegedly engaged in. Um, And, you know, here we have this theft and and at least in most jurisdictions, you know, crimes of dishonesty can come in to evidence. And even if they're past crimes of dishonesty or acts of dishonesty. um, And and so theft, you know, stealing from a family member, most courts view that as dishonesty. And and what it means is that if Brian Koberger were to take the stand in this death penalty trial, the prosecution may be able to bring up prior alleged acts of dishonesty like stealing the phone. Now, is it, um, you know, the smoking gun in the case? Of course not. Um, Does it tell us something about the mentality of Brian Koberger, about uh, his upbringing, about his development? I think it probably does. So I'd be interested to see what any mental health experts on either side may say uh, about this prior event and its significance for the case as well. What do you say to uh, the individuals who are very much in in Club Koberger, if you will, uh, that are are not looking at the evidence or seem to be uh, pretending that things don't exist, uh, who are really questioning and and putting a conspiracy onto this, where the idea essentially would be 60 FBI agents, the Moscow Police Department, Idaho State Police, and all Pennsylvania authorities have conspired to frame Brian Koberger, of all people, uh, to for ha- having done this this crime. I mean, there, there doesn't really seem to be a whole lot of grounds for framing someone on this. 
Uh, what would you? What do you say about that when when you see those sort of things online? Because it it's not in a small vacuum or a small community. There's a lot of people that just seem to be have the ability to, I don't know, deny evidence uh, in something like this. Yeah, I feel you. You know, I, I am so um, big on having folks suspend judgment, mm -hmm. especially ultimate judgment on a case until it has really gone through the process and you've heard evidence from both sides. Now, usually I'm saying, hey, don't condemn a person uh, as guilty until until you know both sides. But I think the, the flip side of that is also don't uh, you know draw a conclusion that a person is absolutely being framed for a quadruple murder um, without any significant basis for doing so. You know, one thing I'd mention is um, if it is true that Brian Koberger was just being framed and had nothing to do with this, uh, it's likely that he would have some kind of alibi, meaning he would have some evidence that he was somewhere else when these were committed because he didn't do it. We haven't heard evidence of an alibi just yet, which, um, you know, makes me skeptical uh, about the position that, that Brian Koberger is just completely being framed and had, you know, nothing whatsoever to do. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.